Good day everyone. So our topic is all about the foundations of curriculum development. So curriculum development is anchored in a very solid foundation. Although um, considered to be a new discipline, its significance in the light of global development has now been acknowledged. What philosophical, historical, psychological, and sociological influences inform the current school curriculum? How do this foundation reflect the development of curriculum in our 21st century classroom and learning environment? Who are the identified curricular risks with these foundations? Let us find out. So, kasama ko pala si Kavan Glenbon sa pagdidiskusyo sa paksang ito. So, magsisimula tayo sa four educational philosophies. So, ito ay nakakatulong ito sa pagsagot kung para saan ang mga paaralan, kung anong mga paksa ang mahalaga, kung paano dapat patuto ang mga mag-aaral, at kung ano ang mga materyales at pamamaraan ang dapat gawin. Sa paggawa ng desisyon, ang philosophy ay nagbibigay ng paninimulang punto at gagamitin para sa susunod na pagpapasya. So, let us now look at the four educational philosophies and how this relate to curriculum. So, first is the perennialism. So, nandiyan yung aim, rule, focus, trends ng perennialism. So, perennialism um, draws from both idealism and realism. So, education must therefore pursue perennial truths. So, these truths are absolute and universal. So, the philosophy presupposes that there are permanent studies and knowledge that is available particularly from the great books which should be taught to all students. So next is the essentialism. So this essentialism um, focuses on traditional subjects, reading, writing, and mathematics. As with perennialism, this is also on the major traditional philosophies of idealism and realism. So schools should therefore not be sidetracked into catering to the personal problems and social needs of students. As you can see on the aims, rule, focus, and trends on essentialism. So next is the progressivism. So one of the educational philosophies originating from pragmatism. So progressivist education seeks to promote democratic schooling as well as social living. So the other major emphasis is on a child or learner-centered curriculum. So the curriculum therefore is based on the learner's interests needs, abilities, and aspirations among other characteristics of the learners. So, the aim of this form of education is to provide a learning atmosphere that allows children maximum self-direction and to reduce teacher domination in the teaching or learning process. So next is the reconstructionism. So reconstructionism um, educational aims are to improve and reconstruct society as need be as well as education for change and social reform. Thus, the study of contemporary social problems become the centerpiece of curriculum content. So let us now find out the historical foundation of curriculum. So but before that, um, before we go to the further discussion about this topic, so I have some one question here. Why is it important to know the historical foundation of curriculum? So curriculum is not an old field. So, majority of scholars would place its beginning in 1918 with the publication of Franklin Bobbitt's book, The Curriculum. So, here, we present um, several curriculum theories and how they view curriculum from a historical perspective. So, they are presented chronologically from the time of Bobbitt in, 19, in 1876 to 1956 to Peter Olivia in 1992 to 2012. And now let us start with um, Franklin Bobbitt on 1876 to 1956. So with his contribution to the curriculum development. So he influenced the curriculum by showing how teaching classical subjects should be replaced by teaching subjects that correspond to social needs. So in 1918, um, Bobbitt wrote the curriculum a summary of the development concerning the theory of the curriculum. So this became an official spe specialization in the education sciences. Next is where it charters on 1876 to 1956. So um, with his contributions on the curriculum development. So he was a pioneering researcher in teacher education and curriculum development. So his scientific approach to curriculum development through analysis of life activities broke new ground in the emerging field of curriculum study. 
Next is William Kilpatrick on 1875 to 1952 and with his contribution. So he developed the project method for early childhood education, which was a form of um, progressive education that organized curriculum and classroom activities around a subject central theme. So he believed that the role of a teacher should be that of a guide as opposed to um, authoritarian figure. So next is Harold Drag on 1886 to 1960 and with his contribution to the curriculum development. So during his long career, Rag made significant contribution at least four areas of the curriculum field. So he was an American educator who created an influential social studies textbook series, Man and His Changing Society, in the 1920s and host wide-ranging writings address measurements and statistics in education and teacher training among other topics. Um, next is Hollis Caswell on 1901 to 1989 and with his contribution. So he was an American educator who became an authority in curriculum planning in schools. So he directed surveys of curriculum practices in several school systems and wrote several books on the subject. Next is Ralph Tyler on 1902 to 1994 and with his contribution. So he believed that the structure of the school curriculum also had to be responsive to three central factors that represent the main elements of an educative um, experience. So next is Hilda Taba on 1902 to 1967 and with his contribution to the curriculum development. So she defines curriculum as containing a statement of the aims and to be specific objectives. So it indicates some selection and organization of content. It either um, implies or manifests certain patterns of learning and teaching. And the last proponent is Peter Oliva on 1992 to 2012 and with his contribution. So he described how curriculum change is a cooperative endeavor. So and also curriculum is product of its time. On the lesson plan, this principle of Oliva is reflected in a way that the lesson is updated and it is relevant, which can help learners to be updated and to come up with ideas that is convenient and timely. So ito lamang ang aking ibabahagi patungkol sa aming paksa. So ang karugtong na bahagi nito ay ilalahad ng aking kasamahan na si Kavan Glenbon. Maraming salamat po.